Okay, this is more like it. From front of the show, Osamu in Ibaraki Prefecture comes a Famicom installment of the rather sordid history of Ultraman video games, which thankfully isn't a dubious 2D fighter. It is in fact a platformer and a fairly decent one at that. I know! So it looks like there was a light at the end of the tunnel after all. Ultraman Club Kaiju Dai Kessen exclamation point makes everything a bit cuter by going with super deformed versions of five, count them, five flavors of Ultraman. And I can't really distinguish between them because most have never really been seen in the States, save for Ultra 7. Everyone loves Ultra 7. Yeah, if you turn your head a bit and look from the right angle, this almost looks like one of Capcom's rather well-received Disney licenses. It's a sound, responsive platformer with just enough difficulty to challenge. Ultraman there can punch, jump, kick, and fire his arsenal of various projectile attacks, which all run off of one energy age. You can knock far off enemies off kilter just long enough to close the gap with a low strength pop, or just blow them up with a specium ray. Thing is, though, you don't have to blow your super attack in order to kill anything! I know, it's kind of amazing compared to every other Ultraman game I've ever played, but there you go. This is a different kind of Ultraman game. It's fun. The platforming mechanics feel comfortably responsive, hitboxes make sense, controls feel, well, in control. This is an Ultraman game, right? Man, weird. This game even has the courtesy of not interrupting a boss fight if you lose a life, instead just allowing you to continue in real time. Sure, these boss fights tend to be knocked down, drag out affairs that likely see you just wailing on the bastard for a while, and with the rest of the game pretty much screaming, can we be Mega Man now? I struggle to believe this dis and remantling boss isn't inspired at least partly by the infamous Yellow Devil. There are even med packs to collect, which function just like the E-tanks that adorn everything from t-shirts to coffee mugs. It's still very much Ultraman, though, with iconic monsters roaming around, albeit in chibi versions, and a strict three-minute timer because, well, Ultraman. Ultraman Club feels like one of those platformers that made the last few years of the Famicom slash NES a really exciting time to play. It's well thought out, the level design's pretty decent, even if it does feel a bit copied and pasted in parts, and the soundtrack's darn catchy. I fear I've been turned on this whole Ultraman games are crap tear. Now it's just a matter of, well, catching up with almost five decades of history, hundreds of episodes, and, you know, sizable language barrier. Or in TJ speak, a weekend.